Uh, ready to get started. So good evening. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to make people aware that there's things on the side that can't see the front very well. So we did the side screens. Um, thank you for joining us for this public hearing regarding safety improvements along State Road A1A and Coco Beach. We welcome those joining us in person as well as those participating online or on the phone. Uh, my name is Sue Howe. I'm the project manager for the Florida Department of Transportation. Over the last week or so, we've heard from those in the community and local agencies about the improvements the department was initially proposing to the mid block process of this project. Please know that we are listening and we appreciate all the feedback we receive. Uh, which is why, also why we kept this scheduled hearing so that we can hear from you. We are here tonight to record everyone's feedback and listen to everyone's suggestions for the best way we can improve pedestrian safety in Coastal Beach. A study done in 2017, which was requested by the city of Coastal Beach, showed there is a need for pedestrian improvements in the area. So while we have heard concerns regarding Mid-Block Crossing, we want to hear from you tonight about your thoughts of needed improvements. The department will then take all the comments received here tonight and further evaluate the options to improve safety along this corridor. We would like to emphasize that our plans presented tonight are not set in stone. Hmm. With that said, uh, we would like to still show all the originally proposed safety improvements on this project as some improvements are separate from the mid-block crossings with the angular rapid flashing beacons or RFBs. And this presentation will also serve to inform those who may not be familiar with the RFPs. Uh, following the short presentation, we will offer a formal public comment period, giving everyone an opportunity to offer any comments. We look forward to your input. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. My name is Carolyn Fitzwilliam. I'm one of the communications consultants for the project, and I will be presenting um, the presentation this evening. So welcome to the public hearing for the State Road A1A Mid-Block Crossings Design Project from Cocoa Isle Boulevard to St. Lucie Lane in Brevard County. Interested persons were invited to participate in this live public hearing by attending in person at the Ocean Landings Resort, 900 North Atlantic Avenue in Cocoa Beach by telephone or virtually using the GoToWebinar platform over the internet. This public hearing is being held due to changes in access management along State Road A1A. The purpose of this hearing is to share information about the project with the local community and other interested persons, and to provide an opportunity for the public to express their opinions on the design. The public hearing is being held in compliance with all applicable state and federal regulations and was advertised consistent with all requirements. Letters were sent to elected officials, government partners, agencies and businesses and property owners, and other interested persons. An advertisement was also published in the Florida Today newspaper on Sunday, December 27, 2020, and again on Sunday, January 3, 2021. The FDOT also submitted an ad to be published in the Florida Administrative Register and distributed a press release to the local media. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting the Florida Department of Transportation District 5 Title VI Coordinator Jennifer Smith by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5367, or by email at jennifer.smith, the number two, at dot.state.fl.us. Persons may also contact the FDOT statewide Title VI Coordinator, Jacqueline Paramore, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32390, by phone at 850-414-4753, or by email at jacquelin.p 
P-A-R-A-M-O-R-E at dot.state.fl.us. The purpose of this project is to provide pre pedestrian enhancements to improve safety and meet the Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA requirements. The project is based off a request from the city of Cocoa Beach for the FDOT to conduct a pedestrian safety study, which was completed in 2017. Over a five-year period from 2012 through 2016, there were a total of 14 pedestrian or bicycle-related crashes documented within the project limits. These crashes resulted in one fatality and 12 injuries. The four locations identified in the safety study have been considered for installation of mid-block pedestrian crosswalks and will be described in this presentation. The pedestrian safety study recommended the installation of rectangular rapid flashing beacons or RRFBs with a raised median. This project is federally funded and all proposed improvements meet Federal Highway Administration or FHWA guidelines and regulations. The project is located along State Road A1A from Cocoa Isle Boulevard to St. Lucie Lane in the city of Cocoa Beach, Brevard County. The original recommendations for this project included constructing mid-block crossings at four new unsignalized locations, south of Tulip Avenue, north of Antigua Drive, north of South Banana River Boulevard, and south of Pinellas Lane. The recommendations included reconstruction with Americans with Disabilities Act ramps, rectangular rapid flashing beacons or RRFB, striping perpendicular to the middle of the median crossings and a stop bar for vehicles 30 feet from the crosswalk for both approaches. Other initial pedestrian safety enhancements include additional curb ramps at 11 locations, detectable warning surfaces at three curb ramps, repairing sidewalk deficiencies, and crosswalk striping at 12 unsignalized side street intersections. While motorists are legally required to stop for pedestrians in any crosswalk in the state of Florida, rectangular rapid flashing beacons or RRFBs are used to bring more visibility to the marked crosswalk. RRFBs consist of two rapid flashing yellow lights mounted below a yellow pedestrian crossing sign. The flashing lights remain dark until activated by a pedestrian wishing to cross. So how do pedestrians interact with RRFBs? Upon approaching the crosswalk, the beacon will be dark and vehicles will be traveling as normal. Pedestrians should press the button to activate the flashing yellow warning lights, telling drivers that a person is ready to cross the street. Pedestrians will notice the flashing lights or supplemental lights on the side of the RRFB to let them know the device has been activated. The flashing lights on the beacon will continue for enough time to allow the pedestrians to cross. Pedestrians may enter the crosswalk when motorists have come to a complete stop or if no traffic is present closer than a safe stopping distance. Make eye contact with drivers to confirm they are yielding before entering the crosswalk. Continue to look in both directions as you cross the street. After the pedestrians have completed crossing and the RRFB has stopped flashing, any approaching pedestrians will have to press the button again to activate the RRFB, repeating the cycle. Pedestrian safety signs will be posted along the corridor to alert vehicle drivers and let them know that pedestrians are in the area and that pedestrian crossings are coming up. Motorists will see the pedestrian ahead warning signs prior to the crosswalk. The motorist may proceed ahead cautiously if no pedestrians are in the crosswalk. The yellow lights begin flashing rapidly, indicating to motorists that a pedestrian is attempting to cross and that the motorist must stop or clear the crossing if they are too close to stop. The beacon continues flashing for a time appropriate to the crossing distance. Motorists must remain stopped until crossing pedestrians have cleared their lane, at which time they may proceed if there are no additional pedestrians in the crosswalk. The beacon will remain dark until a new pedestrian approaches and presses the button. The first originally proposed mid-block crossing is 250 feet south of Tulip Avenue. All access will be maintained with the exception of left turns from Denny's Northern Driveway onto State Road A1A. The existing five foot wide sidewalk will be reconstructed at the northern entrance to Denny's restaurant. 
The second proposed mid-block crossing would be 140 feet north of Antigua Drive. The left turn from Antigua Drive onto State Road A1A northbound will be maintained. The third mid-block crossing is 520 feet north of Banana River Boulevard. The left turn out of Summerwind Condominiums will be maintained. The right turn lane to the Banana River Center will remain but be reduced with a tapered entrance. The fourth mid-block crossing is 190 feet south of Pinellas Lane. The northern entrance to the First United Methodist Church will be closed. All other access will be maintained. Sidewalk will be reconstructed to accommodate the proposed connection. As with all FDOT projects, coordination is done with community partners such as emergency responders, utility providers, and local transit agencies throughout the life of the project. Coordination with these partners will continue as we evaluate further options to improve pedestrian safety on this corridor. The Florida Department of Transportation and the Space Coast Transportation Planning Organization have been sponsoring events to educate the public about pedestrian and bicycle safety, road markings, traffic laws, and road user behavior. For more information about this project, please visit www.cflroads.com slash project slash 443-544-1. You are encouraged to visit this website to stay current with the status of the project. Once you have accessed the website, you will be able to view more information on the project, including project contact information. You can also send a comment or ask a question from this webpage. Hearing materials are available on the website. A recording of this public hearing will also be uploaded, uploaded to the website within a week of this hearing. FDOT values your input and there are several ways that you may share your comments with the project team. We will respond to all questions and comments in writing after the hearing. If you are attending tonight's hearing online, you may submit a written comment by using the questions tab on the control panel. The questions box is on the right side of your screen. Just click on the tab and you can type inside the box. Please note that the audience will not be able to see what you have typed in. However, all written comments or questions provided will become part of the public hearing record. If you wish to make a verbal st statement, click on the questions tab and type in your name, followed by, I want to speak. When it's your turn to speak, the host will unmute your microphone first, and then you will need to unmute your microphone before you can begin speaking. Your microphone icon will be green when it is unmuted. If you are joining us by telephone in listen only mode, please contact FDOT Project Manager Sue Howe directly after the hearing by phone at 386-943-5161 or by email at sue.howe, which is su dot h-a-o at d-o-t dot state dot f-l dot u-s. If you are attending in person and you wish to make a public statement, please complete the speaker request card you were given when you came in and return it to a project team member. It is important that we have your information on a speaker card for the public record. We appreciate your participation. All comments and questions expressed during the public comment period in person and, are, and online are being recorded and will be responded to in writing following the hearing. There are also several ways that you can submit your comments in writing. Fill out a comment form and drop it in the comments box at the comments table at the in-person location. You may take a comment form with you and mail it to the address shown on the form. For those attending online, you can download a comment form and send it in to the address shown on the form. You may email your comments to the FDOT project manager, Sue Howe at su.hao at dot.state.fl.us. Phone users can mail comments by U.S. mail to the Florida Department of Transportation, Attention Sue Howe, Project Manager, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 542, DeLand, Florida, 32720-6834. You may also make a comment through the project website at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 443-544-1. 
While comments are accepted anytime, comments received or postmarked by January 26, 2021 will become part of the public record for this hearing. Yes, yes. So, thank you for your interest in this project and for taking time to participate in this public hearing. Uh, before we start the public comment period, I just want to reiterate that we are here to listen and gather feedback. With the information received through the public comment period, we will further evaluate additional options to help improve pedestrian safety on this corridor. The initial plans have explained it. Tonight's presentation are not set in stone, which is why we are looking for the community's feedback. We will now call upon those who are requested to speak. When your name is called, please state your name and address. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. Also, so please limit your comments to three minutes. We will start with the in-person attendees. When called, please proceed to the standing microphone to make your comment. The microphone will be sanitized between speakers. Attendees online will be able to make comments following the in-person attendees. Attendees online will be unmuted one at a time in the GoTo webinar by the organizer. Attendees on the phone in listen-only mode will have the opportunity to provide comments in writing or by contacting me soon after the hearing by phone at 386-943-5161 or by email at su.hko at dot.state.fl.us. All comments and questions received at this public hearing will be addressed in writing after the public hearing. All right, so first we'll call upon Mr. Thomas S. Cunningham. Mr. Cunningham, will you please come? I'm Mr. Cunningham from 2100 North Atlantic Avenue. Um, my biggest concern with this, first of all, is, is the fact that it was yellow. Yellow is, I think, universally recognized as a cautionary slowdown. And I, and I certainly believe that, that that's the way drivers approach it, particularly drivers that are not familiar with this particular triangular sign. It looks very much like it's the service truck or some other kind of vehicle to stop in the road. Second thing is, A1A, particularly in some of these mid-block areas, is not a narrow road. A lot of you find danger is coming from the perpendicular traffic coming out. They come out and they pick up speed and they don't really, you know, they don't see that you've already started across the road. Um, it's, uh, I really believe that they could be improved, first of all, if they were red, you know, a light that is recognized as a stop indicator. And secondly, I, I just feel that that perpendicular distance in some of those roads, when they're coming off, they're picking up speed while you've already started to cross the road, and it's, Kind of terrifying when you see it there. I mean, it doesn't seem and it hasn't, it hasn't really recognized that if you're in a cross in a crossing accident. So I think I'd like you to really think first and long and hard about that yellow turning it red. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. Really appreciate your comment. We will take that into account and provide a written response after this public hearing. Thank you. Um, so next we have Sean E. Bob back. Sue, could it's a little bit hard to hear the speakers on the online um, component. If you could ask them to speak into the microphone and speak loudly, please. I'll do that. <laughs> I'm John Bab, 290 Seminole Lane, uh, apartment 304. And first off, I want to thank you guys for being here at, at night. I know we're back for hours and just taking you away from home. 
Uh, number two, I think this is a very needed project. Uh, my concerns are primarily in the information that you can get as far as I did. And I went to the website, only got this one page. There's a lot of information missing. But I wish I could have seen more about the project as far as I did. But having said that, my concern and the reason I'm here is basically what I have seen in Satellite Beach in Indian Harbor. I pretty much drive to Melbourne two or three times a week. And what they did down there is what I don't want to see you guys do here. Uh, they put a flash, there's so much going on, flashing right in the middle, flashing right on the side, the areas in the middle of the road. It's a distraction and it's not safe. And I don't really want that for a city. Uh, I totally acknowledge uh, what I think it was Mr. Cunningham who said about how terrifying it is to walk down the street and see a car coming to you that doesn't see you. When you go too far, like they did down there, that's exactly what you encourage, and I don't think that's what you want. So I'd ask you to put a little thought in that. Number two, I'm really not comfortable with the locations that you picked for these. Um, I think maybe you picked them based on some distance between, I don't know how, how big it is. And I'm looking around the room and I've heard some people talk, and I bet there's some great ideas and pretty problems could be. And I'll yield to those, but I really feel this one. But particularly, that Banana River crossing seems like a waste of money for me. I certainly welcome you know, other people in the audience that they have their opinion. Um, Last thing I would like to say just has to do with cost, because this is tax money, this is not money that goes with anybody else. Most of the people you mail these notices to, I'm guessing, I don't know the numbers, but probably 50% of the people don't live here. Uh, they live somewhere else. It really seems unnecessary to use that. They go expensive stuff to mail this out. I know you're following the rules, but I know that's not your choice, but that's kind of annoying to me. And I wish that we were spending our actual value a little more wisely. I realize it's a conversation. It doesn't help to get in here. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to say is I totally support you cleaning up uh, cross streets, uh, the technical markers, cleaning up lane markings. I guess we've lived here about 12 years and we've seen one or two near misses. But we recognize this budget has value to the community. Just wish you pay attention to those issues I've mentioned. Question like, don't make this so much it's a distraction and not a help. Thank you, Mr. Bad. That was really good, valuable input, and um, we will provide a written response after the hearing. Thank you. So, next we have uh, Mr. Mike Miller. I'm confident of those of you who came here, we all really have care goals. We really want the same thing to find a safe way for pedestrians to get across A1A and O2. In a state, a run both unites and divides us. It provides the conduit and it's fine, or you can travel by vehicle and get around the city, but it also severs our city in half. So we really need a safe way to get across. Uh, most of you know that I'm a city commissioner, and in that position, I've lobbied long and hard to try to get safety improvements in our city. Uh, and I want to thank FDOT for the many things that you've done. We've provided sidewalks, we've extended bicycle lanes, we have improvements at A1A and 520, and many other things. And we truly appreciate it. That that's really that can help our situation. Uh, I have an interest in this, and actually, Bob Torres invited me to meet with Kevin Marquez when we did the installation of the very first crossing at 4th Street. I would have to say that he impressed me as being a very dedicated person who wanted very much to make sure that things were done correctly. However, I publicly defended these flashing beacons. And unfortunately, I said that people would eventually understand how they were and they would uh, start to abide by them. But I found out that 
the driver behavior really hasn't changed and it's caused me to reevaluate. I also have observations about the midlock crossings and what I've heard is that they have a bit clutter of road signs. I think they're sensory overload. It's difficult for people to really distinguish. They feel really kind of, I mean, overloaded with information. It impedes the natural flow of traffic and thereby creates animosity between drivers and pedestrians that we really don't need. Uh, while I think it's unfair the FDOT to over embellish the death of Sophia Nelson in Satellite Beach, you can't deny that it happened to either. I've caught the attention of our state legislators, and there was a, a House Bill 1371 Traffic and Investment Safety, which actually passed the House on the floor 181 votes to one last year. So we know that they are also concerned about these speakers. In summary, I would say that we desperately need to provide clear direction, which will allow drivers, bicycles, and pedestrians all share the right of way we have on A1A. Uh, I've real evaluated the benefit of the uh, crossings and uh, flashing yellow beacons, and we would not like nothing more than enter up in the dialogue with FDOT on finding a better solution to this problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. You know, if we had a department, we're still deeply saddened by an incident that happened at uh, Satellite Beach. And uh, we are striving to do what we can to improve the effectiveness of our block crossings. Um, we take your comments into consideration and respond, uh, make a formal response after the hearing. So next, we have uh, Mr. David B. E. Elsrod. David Ellsrode, 1830 North Atlantic Avenue, Cocoa Beach. I'd like to thank you for having this uh, hearing and letting us um, give you our suggestions. And I appreciate you being open to hearing those suggestions. Um, I'm a pedestrian. I do a lot of walking almost every day in Cocoa Beach. I also ride a bike to get from point A to point B. I use it whenever I'm traveling close. Um, and I um, also run on the sidewalks, sometimes in the bike lanes. I observe a lot of driver behavior doing this. I've done satellite beach, I've done Coco Beach for the past 15 years. And the, the first question I usually get when I get home is, how many people tried to kill you today? Um, the pedestrians have a difficult fight in Coco Beach. I applaud you for are coming to the realization that we that things need to be done to protect the pedestrians. The drivers have a lot of steel, plastic, and fiberglass around them. The pedestrians don't. The bike riders don't. The runners don't. The skateboarders don't. So thank you for, for uh, taking on this. My comments on the proposal are, number one, I walk to the public at the Banana River Center probably three times a week, and I don't see any need for adding an additional stopping point for cars since there's a crosswalk on the south end of the store, out the center, and one on the north. I find those very convenient. And every day walk there, it's not a problem. On the other three, my comments um, really come under the, the heading of, I think it's a shame that you're trying to reinvent the wheel. I have uh, walked and ridden bicycles and driven all over the world, cities, rural areas, all over the world. And one thing that's universally known, no matter what language you speak or where you live, is red means stop. The other thing that's universally known everywhere except in Florida, where for some reason we're trying so hard to change behavior, is yellow means slow down, use some caution, proceed when safe. You're fighting a losing battle trying to teach motorists to stop for a yellow light. Um, I think it's interesting your statistics show during the study period one death in Cocoa Beach in whatever it was, three or four years. Yet you put in the flashing lights and almost immediately a child died. 
with those flashing lights. Take a day and go down there where those lights exist now and spend a couple hours crossing the street, watching driver behavior. It's not working. When there's no pedestrians, because of all those signs and all of that uh, narrowing down of the throughway, the cars are slamming on brakes unnecessarily. It's backing up traffic unnecessarily. I would encourage you on the other three locations to slide it uh, a little closer to where you've got already a paved access lane or road or something and put in a regular crosswalk and a light that goes from green to yellow to red and the pedestrians get the cross sign and cross. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Ellsworth. Uh, appreciate your shared enthusiasm to improve pedestrian safety in this area. And uh, we will evaluate uh, all options um, as we uh, take your comment into consideration. Uh, next, we have Mr. Matthew Delgadio. All right, good evening. Uh, Matt Delgadio, 2100 North Atlantic Avenue. Uh, my, my question is more going to the um, the length of the time to complete this project. Uh, I believe it's supposed to start the fall of 2021. Uh, is there an estimate how long it would take? Are they doing it by corner first? It, it does say it's going in sections. Is this going to be a lengthy thing like the sewers on 520 and A1A? Um, is uh, debris going to be on the sidewalk on the weekends where they were working and things of that nature? So, is that going to be supervised? Who's going to do that? And uh, timetable is the question. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dagadio. Um, we, we will provide a response to all questions after the public hearing. Uh, we're just here to take uh, comments and questions for now, but if you would like after the Hearing period, you can come up in, to us and uh, we can uh, talk about that. I can stop the time. Now. Thank you. Next, we have Mr. Peter J. Cunningham. Good evening. Uh, my name is Peter Cunningham. My office happens to be at 4th Street North and North Atlantic Avenue, right on the corner. My office window looks out on the first uh, project that DOT put in the yellow crosswalk. And from what I observe every day, five days a week, you're wasting your money, you're wasting our money. Half the cars slow down a little bit because they're confused. And then they keep going, they don't stop. Half the people don't bother pushing the button to cross, they just cross. The other half of the people avoid the intersection totally or the crosswalk totally and cross on the north side of Fort Street where there's no apparatus whatsoever. Um, and, you know, we appreciate the fact that you're trying to improve the safety. I think this is overkill. I think satellite beach is absolutely overkill. And we don't want to join in that mess if we can avoid it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham, for your comments and observations. And we'll provide a written response after the hearing. Next, we have uh, Ms. Mary Mayo. Give me a minute, please. Well, let me bring that to you. Oh. Thank 
Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak uh, on this very important subject. Uh, I'm a former elected official here in Cocoa Beach. I was also on the Florida Department of Transportation local board. We called it the municipal planning organization at the time. And I will tell you that uh, uh, this is a very important subject because what has happened, what you have done to Satellite Beach has redirected my uh, shopping habits, my travel habits. I will do anything to not go through Satellite Beach. I will take the Trinity to Causeway and I will go over to the main one and come around that way. But in Satellite Beach, let's remember people, you have alternate roads. It's called South Patrick Drive. And also in Melbourne, where I understand you're planning to blanket Melbourne Beach, there is an alternate to A1A. It's called Indian River Drive. Folks, we have no alternate. They stopped the filling in of the Banana River. We don't have an alternate route. Because if I did go down that way, I would use the alternate routes. I would peel off as soon as possible. You've ruined it. It is unsafe. I am now a American with Disabilities Act person. And I will tell you, I do not want this in Cocoa Beach. There is only one way I will get on A1A in Cocoa Beach. And that is if I am at a light crossing. At a light crossing. Mer emergency vehicles, we have emergency vehicles that need to uh, transport people up and down into the hospital and to the mainland. We have fire trucks. We have police with high speed chases or criminals. This is an impediment to safety for the city and the residents of Cocoa Beach. I strongly object to it. It is just, it doesn't make sense at all. It is really crazy. So uh, please, you know, I, I understand that you're wanting to make things better, but you need to get involved with the citizens and find out what better will be. Better is going to be stop lights. Add them, put them in. You have to have a hundred of them, fine. But please do not proceed forward with this plan. It, it absolutely is not important to us. It is an evacuation route also. And that's all we need is with our evacuation route is to have all these interruptions that we're trying to complete. And we only have one route, A1A. Thank you for your concern. Thank you for trying to make things better, but if you're not, it's making it worse. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mayo. I really appreciate your comments. And uh, this is what we're here for, to gather comments and your ideas. We want to do what's right for the community. Really appreciate your enthusiasm. Next, we have Mr. Ed Martinez. Ed Martinez, Ed Martinez, City of Cocoa Beach uh, Commissioner. Um, I want to thank you for, for giving us this opportunity to speak here tonight. I know a lot of the points um, that we uh, heard today already from Commissioner Mike Miller. Um, is some of the stuff that I'll reiterate. But more importantly, I think for, for me as an elected official and uh, responsible for for our citizens' safety is that I can only use what I know as my example. When I pull up to one of these lights and it puts rain, I stop in my truck and I'm praying that the car next to me stops. Because if they don't stop, I feel responsible somehow for that person that's crossing in front of my truck. I'm beeping the horn, I'm putting my hand out, I'm doing whatever I can. So I, I think in theory, these crosswalks would work if perhaps the color was changed. If also if we didn't have a major party. These are very good ideas for communities um, that may have a two, two lane street where you see it, it's a small, you're, you're driving at 15, 20 miles an hour. Here, not so much. We have cars coming. I mean, we've lowered the speed limit, but we all know people are driving 40, 50 miles an hour down A1A. I saw down I stop person next to me 
And that to me is the biggest concern is we're giving folks a false sense of security, saying push this button and then start walking across safe. And that's never going to happen because as has been noted, people don't stop. Uh, not only are you getting a, a, a false sense of security, but also I think you're you're almost endangering folks because you're the people that know the rules are stopping. The people behind you don't even know why you're stopping because they're not seeing a red light. So I know you're you're in a tough position um, because I know you guys work hard on, on these projects. And I think they work uh, in other places in Florida, perhaps, given different uh, scenarios. I, I just don't see how it's possible that it works here in Cocoa Beach. I am on public record with the rest of the commission saying that um, I, I do not support any of them at all. Um, the one from the public, of course, that doesn't make any sense at all. But really, if the if FDOT wants to uh, move forward with with something like this and really protect our citizens, let's add traffic lights. That way you can time them. Add more traffic lights. Everybody knows if you have an additional traffic light, it's red, people will stop. Add the additional traffic lights. I almost feel it and okay. I I almost feel like we should add more traffic lights and less of these if it's you know, if it's a cost, if it's a cost driver cost saver, then let's go with the traffic light. And I think you for that. Thank you, Mr. Murphy, and appreciate your comments and uh, suggestions. We'll provide a written response after it's on screen. Next we have uh, Ms. Karen Rice. Hey, my name is Karen. My name is Karen Rice. I live at 3613 South Banana River Boulevard in Cocoa Beach. Um, I've been driving over 50 years and I have been a pedestrian struck by a moving vehicle and have lived to tell it. And my body tells me every day that that happened to me. Um, every time I drive to Satellite Beach, especially at night, at night is a horror story. Some vehicles stop, like several people have said. Others behind you, you hope they don't rear-end you. People can't read the signs on the road, look at the pedestrians, watch who's in front of them. It, it, it's, a, it's an insane situation. I'm actually surprised more people have gone by. I find it rather terrifying, and I'm like, woman over there, I, I will take alternate routes to avoid going down a one south or north, coming home. Um, my experience is being a town full of tourists. Most tourists simply don't comply. They, I, I've seen them be 20 feet from a stoplight and they'll still jaywalk. So I don't see that this is going to really solve the kind of problem you're looking for. And this whole thing with yellow lights just makes me crazy. After driving for over 50 years, I still go, oh, wait a second, wait a second. These yellow lights mean something different. While I'm trying to navigate all this other stuff, I want people. We don't have yellow lights at railroad crossings. We have red lights, and we need red lights if, if you're going to do this, which I'm absolutely opposed to. This should not be happening, especially in our town. Our town's too little, and we have too many tourists who don't pay attention to it. Um, what I have seen in another state I lived in, because I grew up here in the 60s, and then I left, and then I came back in 2008, 2007. Uh, we had the ramps, the pedestrian ramps that crossed over, and those were awesome. I know they cost a lot of money, but people use those, and they wheel their bikes over them. You know, they, they zigzag, they cross the highway, they everybody safe. People aren't getting killed. Um, I, I, I really it boggles my mind that somebody actually came up with the idea of yellow flashing light, and then it got approved. And I've worked in public service for 35 years, so I can see how complicated government can be sometimes, but this one just takes the cake for me. And I really don't get it. And, and at night, I actually pray. Please, God, don't let me get hit with a car if I'm coming home. Say from Dos Amigos, <laughs> I'm coming home to the Cocoa Beach. Please don't let me get hit. Please don't let me crash into somebody. Please don't let a 
person actually walk out in front of me because they pushed, and I don't know if they're coming from this way or this way. It's terrifying. So I agree. Big mistake if you do this. Big, big mistake, and you should get rid of what you have in satellite. <laughs> Ms. Rice, sorry to hear about your accident and uh, thank you for your comments. We'll provide a written response after the hearing. Next, we have Mr. Skip Williams. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm also a city commissioner here in Cup Street, and I've been a uh, representative from the commission for since 2007 with the MPO and then the TPO and working with FDOT for improvements in our city. And I appreciate the sidewalk improvements we've gotten all throughout our city. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, we got rid of the suicide lanes at 520, and there was a bunch of hoopla about that. You know, that was going to be make that intersection worse than the D that it rated when we did the improvements. And my experience is personally that actually that intersection works better. Um, and I supported the basically in the early days the experimental. Uh, two flashing yellow light crosswalks that are currently in place in the city of Cook Beach. I agree with Peter when he says that you know people don't address it properly. Either they don't know or um, they don't care. Um, so as far as these new proposals, I, 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 I don't support them. I'm on public record with the, on the resolution from the city of Cook Beach that so don't support them. Um, it's just the fact that even when there is a, a traffic light with the crosswalk 100 feet from where somebody wants to cross the road, people still jaywalk. So it's not going to, it's not going to save them. You might say that they're, you know, Darwinized or something. They have a little problem there, you know, but you don't want to walk another 100 feet to push the button and go through what is a pedestrian crosswalk with the red light with the walk sign. Um, but as far as the yellow flashing lights, they, they are confusing to people and you really can't figure it out at night. Um, you just see a bunch of yellow flashing lights. You don't know if it's a, like somebody said, if, whether it's a waste management truck on the side of the road or it's a wreck or what it might be. But in, in my day job, our management, you know, wanted to know what kind of issues we had. And uh, about 15 years ago, they went to stoplight charts. And you list your issues, and if your issue was green, they didn't care. If it was yellow, they may, you know, may read it. If it was red, oh my God, you know, the, the, the sky is falling. So, red lights, and it's been introduced to the uh, Florida uh, legislature to changing the red lights. At a minimum, they should be red lights, I mean, flashing lights. And the best benefit would be for, uh, you know, actual traffic lights at intersections to allow more inter intersections for people across that. But to do that, you need to have, an, you need to expand what the authority in place with that, the intelligent traffic system so that the lights sync up and the traffic flow is not impeded and um, so that our emergency vehicles that are now going to have to go all the way to Merritt Island to get people to the hospital will have a way to synchronize those lights to give them green lights to get people that are in dire need of minutes it would matter going to the hospital. Thank you, Mr. Williams. 
Appreciate your time and some questions. Did I fill in the whole three minutes? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Ms. Sarah Union. Sarah Inman, 205 North Main Street. Um, I'm going to try to come at this in a little bit of a different angle because we all, nobody likes the yellow lights that's been established. Um, you know, nobody's really crazy about the idea of policies that's been established. I think the real issue is that um, a lot of us don't really see a whole lot of logic in it. Um, and we see a lot of the stuff that says there was a study, um, but we just don't see where it applies what you've suggested in our town, per se. I um, actually wrote notes and then I got there and I got there and so um, So specifically, if, you know, the true intent of this project is to improve pedestrian safety, I just want to know, you know, what additional measures have you, FPOT, taken um, with regards to pedestrian safety specific to our town? Because we do have a lot of tourist traffic. And we, all know the roads around here, but the tourists don't. So I think the issue that we really need to address is pedestrian education. Um, it is totally unrelated to pedestrian safety, but I think it goes to just broader education. Um, we were in Denver a couple years ago um, and in a bar when they were kind of working out some of the um, you know, different works with legalizing marijuana and their tourism industry. Um, they had to go out to different hotels and bars and restaurants and educate them to make sure that they were educating their guests. I think that's a huge missed opportunity here. Um, they had posters, for instance, at bars, or maybe think of it that, you know, was kind of to give you an idea of where you could do this. But it wasn't free range. Not in this car, not in this bar. Stupid, cute little rhyme things to kind of educate people and remind them. But we have a bunch of people in our town on a regular basis who won't be here next week and won't know, you know, the whole new ground that we're starting over with. I think that's important. The other thing is um, lighting. On any sidewalk in this town, it is dark if you're a pedestrian, unless it is well lit by a, a privately owned business. So I would ask that um, you know we take a hard look at you know how visible are, are the pedestrians if you are a driver from any of the cross streets in Google Beach. Um, I think the pedestrian safety is something that we're going to have to tackle. Something we're going to have to get on board. Might not like the crosswalks, but we're going to have to figure it out because we are a tourist town. That is where, you know, the money comes from in this town, unfortunately, for some of us, but fortunately for some of us. So we kind of have to work to, to walk that way. And I just appreciate you guys coming out and talking. Thank you, Ms. Um Appreciate your comments and suggestions. After, we'll take your comments into the record, provide a written response, but afterward, if you want to talk to us about uh, initiatives that we have going on, so please do so. Uh, next, we have uh, Ms. Carolyn Lewis. I just want to thank you for giving us this opportunity, and you've been really uh, receptive. To all our comments, um, and um, I just wanted to say I'm, I'm I also I'm a city commissioner as well, Purple Beach, and I also do not support these cross spots. And I don't know how far down the line we're going to go with this project, but as if uh, we had to have them, which um, I, I again oppose uh, for all the reasons stated earlier. There is an alternative to the design of the RFPs. And for me, the RF, for me, I just noticed the RF, RFPs, I think the biggest, beside the yellow lights, another issue with them is that there's no warning. The pedestrian pushes the button and they just walk out. And it really doesn't give uh, the, the driver an opportunity to you know, realize what's going on while they're deciding what to do with the yellow light. And um, I did see a design called the PHB, which is a pedestrian hybrid uh, beacon, which actually, I, I'm not sure how far of a line out it's, I'm going to guess it's about 50 feet 
before the crosswalk on either side, there's a line where the car will stop. The pedestrian will push the button, and then a light system at that 50-foot line ahead of the crosswalk will show uh, a red light, well, a yellow warning light, and then a red light. You should stop here. So there's a, there's a buffer line between the driver stopping, a little warning, uh, and, and the crosswalk. And I think that if we had to have the crosswalks, again, I don't know how far, how far along you guys are with this project. Uh, if we had, that would be a good alternative to the armor because you're just, along with the yellow light, there's just a sudden stop. And that's, um, I think that contributed to the death of the girl on Satellite Beach. It's just too sudden. Um, so, again, I thank you guys for trying to make our community safer. And, um, Thank you for engaging with the community. We really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lewis, for your comments. And after the hearing, uh, we'll provide a brief response and we will also uh, be in discussions internally with the city on uh, using all the tools, evaluating all the tools in our toolbox. So I got some secret cards, but uh, it didn't indicate uh, whether the person wanted to speak or not. Uh, I'll just call them out, and if you would like to speak, come up to the uh, podium. Uh, we have Mr. Uh, L. George Leonard. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak uh, on this delicate subject. I've been traveling quite a bit up and down A1A. Satellite Beach is a disaster, and you probably know that. And what you're trying to do is to make Cocoa Beach another disaster. It's people on Cocoa Beach going up and down A1A 40, 50 miles an hour. And to stop in a very short distance, it's not going to happen. And there are, will be more rear endings. There will be more uh, pedestrians that are set up because when they hit that button, they're going to walk. And when they walk, they're going to expose themselves to a car trying to beat the light. And there are going to be more accidents like what happened down in satellite beach. The idea is this disrupts traffic. It creates a traffic hazard with rear ending and endangers the pedestrian more than if they were jaywalking. Because if they were jaywalking, they pay attention. When they have the right to cross the road undeniably, they're going to totally ignore what uh, the traffic is doing. They're just going to run across and this is going to cause problems. Out of state visitors don't know the yellow lights and they will ignore them as many of them have, as been uh, mentioned before. Bike riders. You know, back in elementary school, I was taught if you're riding a bike, you come to a road, you get off the bike, you wait for it clearing, you walk the bike across the road. You don't try to ride the bike. And so many of the people do that. This education signage, where its signage could have prevented uh, a number of bicycle accidents. And this is what I urge you to do to consider uh, rather than that. Uh, that's about all my time is up. I'm going to thank you for having the, uh, the hearing. I appreciate your efforts, although I think it's totally misdirected. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Comments and feedback and consideration of the letter written response after the hearing.
Uh, next, we have Mr. John Dillon. You already go. I'll send an email to you to help record it. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Dillon, for your comments. Uh, next, we have Ms. Judith uh, Liz Vicky. Okay. All right. So that's that's all of the um uh for speaking in person. Um, we have the city manager Ben McKnight would like to uh, do the mark. Thank you, Sue, for uh, the opportunity that we have to speak. I'm primarily here to just present the resolution from the uh, city commission. But as you know, we probably met 18 months ago or something like that to discuss the different options that were there. We primarily focused on your proposal at Publix at that time. I kind of, and of course, you know, I was terribly opposed to that. But I've done some observing, and I think it would be an example of creating a type of tourism and our tourists from Fisher Park, we're creating a, another problem because they have a right to go. But, oh, there's public just a little further up. I'll go up to that crosswalk. I'll know nothing about it. And I'll cross without realizing that I need to wait until it's working properly. So I think you need to back up just a little bit. And I appreciate the time that you're taking to evaluate the different options. Uh, but I'm speaking on behalf of the city commission tonight, and we all want safety. Now I'm going to be here the rest of my life. I'm planning to be here, and I like to walk. I like to be on A1A, and I like to ride my bike and those kind of things. But I think there are concerns, and, you know, with people burning the satellite beach and other places, and, and they have been uh, kind of a test run that takes us to the beach and not look it's coming our way. So I'm not going to read the whole resolution. I want to officially present it to you, but I'm going to read three sections. Um, the city, the Cocoa Beach City Commission supports the residents who believe the four new proposed mid block pedestrian crossings present an unreasonable safety risk. Section three, the Cocoa Beach City Commission is opposed to the installation of four new mid block pedestrian crossings with yellow rectangular rapid flashing vehicles. Section four, the Cocoa Beach City Commission is committed to finding an alternative arrangement to satisfy our shared goals and objectives with FDOP for the pedestrian safety. I'm going to present that to you. I know I've already sent you an email copy, um, and I want to thank the citizens who've been sending me different emails. Every email that comes to the city is immediately forwarded to Sue, so they are getting a record of that. So if you want to uh, go on uh, and have a comment, please, if you wouldn't mind making it sure I get a copy of it, but so make sure. Thank you, Mr. McKinney. We you know, appreciate the city's uh, shared vision to reduce uh, pedestrian accidents along this corridor and we're striving to work with the community. Uh, we'll provide you a written response after the public hearing. Next, we have uh, the speakers who are online or at phone. Carolyn? Yes, we have one person who wishes to speak, Tony Sasso. Um, Mr. Sasso, you should be able to be unmute yourself now. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Uh, first of all, thank you um, for putting this meeting on. I, uh, For transparency, uh, I am a uh, member of the uh, TPO Citizens Advisory uh, committee, former Cocoa Beach City Commissioner as well. And speaking of commissioners, I want to thank our Cocoa Beach Commissioners, our city manager, and, and all the speakers, because quite honestly, I pretty much agree with what everybody's saying. Um, I've been on the TPO CAC for eight years now, and I fought hard and pushed hard for crosswalks. Uh, it's, it's been an uphill battle because it's always cars and vehicles versus bikes and pedestrians. And I understand that because I drive too, but I bike and walk in this community as a lot of people do. 
and it's actually more people are doing it now than, than when I first started. So there's a need for crosswalks, but they need to be safe. And I think uh, Commissioner Miller really uh, put it on the spot. Um, uh, I supported these, but I also realized that the, the way we've done it, which initially I thought would work as well. I thought people would stop and, and for pedestrians, but they don't. They have not learned to do that for whatever reason. I know I traveled all over the state to look at these elsewhere. St. Petersburg Beach, uh, for whatever reason, they're very similar, but they seem to work. They're slightly different, but they work better. Key West, they had them. They didn't work worth a damn. Uh, uh, here in Cocoa Beach, I will tell you, I have personally more than once uh, seen people almost get hit. So one car will stop uh, in the right-hand lane for somebody on crossing from the right side. And as, as they're walking in front of the car stop, the car in the left-hand lane is still going. I literally was screaming and honking to get that woman to stop walking before she was hit by a car. And I've seen that over and over and over again. And I think people think they can just push the button and cars are all gonna stop, but they don't. So having said that, I, I think one of the things that we've done with some of the ones, they seem to work better, but we've personally uh, gone and to the, the actual sites, uh, F, F dot, TPO members, uh, your, your CAC folks, others who know the area, who, who actually will go on site and customize the crosswalks to work for that particular area. If there's a curve in the road or people are accelerating out of a red light or there's too much stuff around that takes people's uh, focus off of looking straight ahead and looking for a flashing light. So I think the first thing, uh, I've got three points. The, the particular crosswalk locations that we're talking about right now, I sort of question those. I think we really need to consider if those are the right locations for them. The second thing, I think, as I mentioned, I think every one of these, before it's put in, you need to get with the local folks, not just in one of these, but to physically go on site, walk it, bike it, and drive through it from every direction to see what works and what doesn't work. We've done that in Cocoa Beach, and I want to thank the, the uh, city manager and others uh, who have helped make that happen. And we've customized them so they at least work better. And then the last thing, um, I know Commissioner Wallace was talking about how having a yellow and red buffer, and, and I haven't seen that. It sounds like it would work. But the bottom line is, if we can't do it right, safely, don't do it. And I got to tell you, and I know it's a legislative thing. We should all be writing to our legislative delegation and the folks on the right committees. We need to make these red lights. People know to stop at a red light. They are not stopping at yellow lights, period. It's just the way it is. And until we fix that, I hate to say it, but adding any more is not a safe thing to do. So sure. thank you, thank you for the time. All right, thank you, sir. We'll provide a response after the meeting. Appreciate your comments. Is that it, Carolyn? No other speakers. Online, have, uh, no other speakers have, re or no other online participants have requested to speak. Okay. Right. Well, then, um, again, thank you all for participating in this public hearing for providing your input for this project. If you have any additional questions or would like more information, you can contact me by mail, telephone, or email. So again, my name is Sue Howe, FDSB Project Manager for the Florida Department of Transportation. 719 South Dillon Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720. My number is 386-943-5161, and my email address is su.hao 
at dot It is now seven o'clock. Uh, hereby officially close the public hearing for the state road A18 Green Crossings Design Project. Have a good evening. Thank you.